from the cold theaters of the world. This is Circuit Breaker. Brought to you by the entertainment site AwardCircuit.com. An in-depth chat on film, television, and all the award shows that need predicting. Here's your host, Clayton Davis. Welcome to Circuit Breaker, brought to you by the entertainment website AwardCircuit.com. I'm your editor, chief owner, Clayton Davis. Here today on August 9th, 2020, time of recording is 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Actually, it's 11.20 Eastern Standard Time because Karen was late today. <laughs> um, this is episode 198, and I'm here today with the latecomer, Karen. Hello. Should have, should have restarted her computer or something like that. This is all alleged. Um, Joey? I suspect she's meeting with Biden for, for VP. Yep. And Marcus Aurelius Johnson. Damn you, technology. I'm good. How are you guys? <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> Terrible, uh, but everyone is. So, okay. so so much stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, – breaking news I saw like uh, a few hours ago. Did you hear Simon Cowell broke his back? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. It's bananas. Riding his electric bike. And yeah. I have a – who has one coming tomorrow. I sent him the article. I was like, um, You're like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's crazy. Um, yeah. So I'll be I'll be okay, Simon. Um, After see, the podcast. Uh, Trump said Christianity <laughs> will have power. So there's that. Oh. Finally, you guys who believe in Christ are going to have some power in the world. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And uh, Peter Navarro was on Chuck Todd today, and he said um, it doesn't help when Speaker Pelosi goes out with her scarves flying and beats the heck out of us. And Chuck Todd asked him, where is the president? Why was he at his golf club all weekend? And Navarro said, he is the hardest working president in history. That's what he responded. On his uh, on his golf swing. Yeah, I agree. Um, in New Jersey, next to me, I need him to I, I need him to be banned from the state. Having low rallies in his golf club, calling them peaceful protests. And he also I also, also good. I was about to say, didn't he? He also said like two days ago, like Joe Biden's going to hurt. God, yeah. I'm like, so it's many, and the Bible. You also pitch him, yeah. He also pitches him as like this ineffectual, doddering old man that makes him sound like a supervillain, and mm -hmm. that sounds amazing. Like I want this powerful man who can like apparently defeat a supreme being. Yeah, I mean, you're selling, you're really selling him to the atheist crowd. Yeah, he's just he's just the worst. God, you come oh, like 97 <laughs> days, 97 days, and then the like week and a half where we wait for the ballots to come in. No, then, no, and then, and no. Then the there's, a, there's six. There, no, there's six weeks after that because because well, Mitch, McConnell, totally like cause Mitch, Mitch McConnell said if if uh, if RBG croaks in that in between, he would still throw someone up. Yeah, but of a couple will. of the Republicans said that they won't do it. So. Yeah, right. They say a I lot mean, of crap and then they do it. Hopefully yeah, just, but hopefully I just think the ones there. who I think the ones who lose, like when Susan Collins loses and things like that. I, uh, I think I don't think she's going to be do no it. incentive for her not to like. What's the first? Well, she yeah. it's the first time she'll have incentive to not just follow the Republicans. Oh no! She <laughs> always says she's going to do it, and then does. Do you, it. do you remember Jeff Flake? Well, the same thing. Yeah, and he voted for Kavanaugh on the way out, but whatever. We're not yeah. going to go. Ahead. We're going to make this old law. All right. So, um, quick thing. I uh, I don't think many people realized or knew, but all right. Let me be honest here i don't think mark knows this so i'm gonna point it out more so for him well thank you and the readers that don't realize so it got announced that steve mcqueen's lovers rock was opening the new york film festival right yes. uh i just want everyone to know or are aware that, that that is part of a mini series that mm -hmm. steve mcqueen is bringing to amazon there are five separate films and that's and lovers rock is one of the five but the first three episodes or first three movies are what's screw what's opening the festival. Lovers Rock, Mangrove, and Red, White, and Blue. Because aren't okay? Because yeah. weren't two films from him on the list for Ken? Yes, I believe so. Did we lose Clayton? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, my... he didn't like my response. Apparently, yeah. but you actually think they announced two of them for Ken? Yeah. Then, so they is this one have, of the two, or is this I, two other ones of the? I five? don't remember what the order was, but I know the NYFF press release said they were looking at the other two. I think, or one of the, or 
I, it, they seem to be looking at several of them really liked Lover's Rock more than the other two. It was like, let's just make that the opener. So okay. I don't I don't know if that was I think Lover's Rock was in the original um, can lineup. I think it was might have been that in Mangrove. I think Red, White, and Blue might not have been. Yeah. I'm trying and, to think. And then the other two were just going to not be anywhere until... Uh, until they hit, yeah. yeah. Unless, well, a, they could turn up at Toronto. What a weird thing, though. You could, you have to go to all the festivals and see all five of the films yeah. before they come. Weird That's strategy. super weird. Yeah. Well, it's also weird to have five movies. Like, I don't yeah. get how... Can you guys work. hear me now? Yeah. Now nice. we can. Jeez, I, like I've been hearing you the whole time. I'm like, hello, what happened? <laughs> Jesus. So no, did you unplug like, your one, microphone? No, 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 I didn't. No, Skype turned off. Like, like di- didn't recognize my microphone anymore, and it was telling me to switch mics. And I was like, I don't have another one. And then, oh. yeah. Oh. So I was like, it was nope. called. I was like, it's called Small Axe. Yes, there was the two films I can. I, why are they hearing me? Well, luckily the recording will have this, so it'll be yeah. fun. One of these oh, days, God. though, we really should pretend we can't hear him and just do yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone say hi to our podcast producer, Drew, who edits our stuff every week. Hi, Drew. Drew, Drew is the best. He's, 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 yeah, so, he's have so much fun with this one this just week. Just everyone pretending you hear Drew going, ah, shit. This yeah, he's like, what the fuck is this? Like, what are you uh, saying, Clayton? Stop talking. Shut up. So, yes, the two at can were Lover's Rock and Mangrove. That's what's good. Go to Can and now uh, NYFF will have Lovers Rock, Mangrove, and Red, White, and Blue, which are the first three of the five uh, of the miniseries. There we go. Okay. That will be going to Amazon Prime. Yeah. And, B- oh, and BBC. Yeah. So next year. So the, I guess the question that um, I think we may need to know or decipher is since there are five separate films, is Lovers Rock a film that is going to be eligible mm. for the Academy. So according to IMDB, it's a one hour and eight episode or eight minute episode. Mm. Which, which is, not. which is qualifying for Oscar. It would be qualifying. Cause that's to be over f- 65, 65 minutes. Yeah. Mm. Barely qualified, but it would, but then if it's released as part of a mini series, or unless they just because I think it's, a, it's an anthology, so it's not like episode episode. Uh, they're, they're not like tied together. It's not a continuous story. It's called Small Axe. No, I understand that. Um, I just I'm thinking, like even if they're not tied together as one series, is there any sort of precedent for anything like that? Uh, I, don't know. I feel like it brings to mind. Yeah, I feel like OJ beat Academy. America. <laughs> but yeah, but then they yeah. they mess with the rules again. So yeah. who knows? I mean, but the rules are so all over, all over the place this year anyway. And yeah. like, yeah. and honestly, like, like looking at Academy members and especially the older ones, like, will they know that Lovers Rock is something different? Like, that's the you know, thing. That, like, that, if that they belongs get to a larger each, scale thing. Yeah, if they if these each show up as separate screeners for the Academy, that might help. But if they know, oh, this is a one hour episode in a five hour mini series, then they're not going to consider each one individually. Yeah, and also if they get sent all five at once, yeah, you're essentially screwing three or four of the five. Yeah, so there's no so chance. Basically, that gets they'd have to choose one to submit and just send that one. Yeah. I don't Mark, think it's what, Mark, Mark, what do you think about life and lovers rock? Do you think the rocks are really lovers, or do you think that mm. they are just friends? I think they friends pose as friends. Yeah, I think they pose with friends, and they try to keep their relationship under wraps. So you think in like the third episode they're going to be revealed, mm. if ever at all? Mm. Mm. Nice, I, nice. I, I really wish Steve McGreen could hear this description of his passion project and go, oh, you monsters. You can't see my movie now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. Before we get into my big topic I want to talk about, because it's really, I think it's pretty positive today. I'm going to be positive. I'm a positive Clayton thing. Mm. Which, I want, which, okay. Which is this is, I mean, it may, it may last, mere, it, it may last a mere second, so just enjoy it while it's here. But what did you guys watch this Man. week? 
What trailers did you watch, Mark? <laughs> what trailers or what movies? <laughs> no, movies. We'll get into the trailers in a second. Uh, all right. Teasing you, Mark. I can go if you guys. Go for it. Not, yeah. I watched, um, I'm still catching up on the 2000s, so I watched Sideways, um, The Incredibles, The Cove. Uh, and then I actually spent part of the week, I went to um, one of our state parks in southern Ohio, Hocking Hills. So that took up some of the time. But I did start um, season two of The Umbrella Academy, and it's off to a fantastic start. I still need to start watching that show. Yeah, and it's like season one. Listen, I don't even like like superhero type stuff, and I love this show. Mm. So let me know what you guys think when you see it. All right. Karen? Um, let's see. This week I watched The Secret Garden, the new movie. Um, it's a new adaptation of the book. And um, I what? Because ninety because ninety three is my secret garden, and I don't want them touching it. I know, I know, really I, know I know it's being done like a million times. It has, but, but but it is very much like Little Women. There's a generation that each version belongs to, so ninety three yeah. is just mine. Unlike Little Women, I feel like <laughs> this one <Uh-oh>. doesn't um, <laughs> doesn't take anything away from the ninety three version, which I also loved. Um, I really liked this and I, I think that it's different enough without making it feel like one is the true adaptation and the other isn't, um, to make it just a really nice movie. It's not like amazing or anything. It doesn't redefine the story, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Um, it's interesting that they had Colin Firth in it and seemed Who does like he, play? He, was, he plays the father or the uncle. Oh, yeah. Does he? Yeah. And, but it's like... He doesn't have long, luxurious hair like the 93 version guy did. <laughs> he has His long hair. His hair was amazing. It's not though. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. The, the, I, I, I can remember being a kid and watching, like, the st- stupid son. The kid who played his son was horrible. But I remember him, like, running his hand through his hair. I'm like, wow, look at that hair. It's so soft. It was glorious hair. Yeah. yeah. Collins is a little more stringy, but, uh-huh. um, yeah, but, and he's, it's weird cause he's in it more, but he's also not in it a lot, but it's like, it feels like he's in it a lot more than he should be. I don't know. Um, he needs to, condi- he needs to condition his hair is what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, no, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was well done. So. The, um, the only time I ever saw Kate Maberly after the secret garden was in finding Everland. She, she's uh, Peter Pan, and when they bring the play to yeah. oh. their house, mm-hmm. that's her. Yeah, so I watched that, and um, I also started watching the Indian matchmaking show. <laughs> oh, I've Netflix. been watching that. That shit is amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. It's so it's so entertaining. Yeah, oh. it really yeah. is. It's oh, so good. much fun. And um one thing that helped me, because a lot of people I saw on Twitter were, like, asking all these questions about, like, I don't understand why this is happening or that. One thing that helped me was several years ago I watched the documentary Meet the Patels, which is on Amazon Prime. Yes. And it really ex- – I love that documentary, by the way. <laughs> and it really explains this world and what they're doing and what the biodatas are and all this stuff. And so it's, like, because I had seen that, I felt like I had enough background to thoroughly enjoy Indian matchmaking. And it's crazy. And some of these people, it's just, like, you don't actually want to get married, clearly, you know? But then there's yeah. others that it's, like, oh, I just want him to find happiness, you know? Yeah. So it's really, yeah. My, my, my favorite is the girl from Jersey, obviously, because she's just, like... Nadia. Oh. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. she's great, and they're in Jersey City so much. They're that that first guy that she goes out with uh-huh. that like ends up like like just ghosting her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're like right uh, like a few blocks away from my job. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so yeah, it was cool. Yeah, so yeah, I was like, that's I like not how's her... it going in that neighborhood? Yeah, and, I like her. I really him. like Viasar too from Houston. He's so oh, sweet. Wait, I hate. Oh yeah, I love him, but I hate the fucking girl from Houston. Oh that, my gosh, that, she's insane. Oh, She's the worst. Oh, She's someone that so Mark deserves like... to be with in life. Jesus. Like, oh, 100% I would set Mark up with. You would not she be, was like, I don't you would like not be good comedy and I don't want a funny person. I was like, yeah. what is wrong with she you? She said, I don't want to laugh. Like, it's not funny. And She oh, literally God. said that. Like, what is wrong oh, with it? Every time she's on a date, I'm like, oh, my God. Tell the dude to leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Run away, right. man. Run away. Anyway, yeah. so that's what Joey, I'm what'd you watch? Uh, new stuff. I watched Tax Collector. I watched uh, 
an American pickle. It's good. And uh, I've still been watching the Harley Quinn series that's on HBO Max, and that's absolutely delightful. I'm oh, I'm thrilled with that. Okay. So yeah, is it's American fun. Pickle good or Joey good? <laughs> See, it's not. Yeah, it's those not are a, two different questions. It's, it's not, not an Joey style movie. Comic. It's it's way more. I'm trying to think of the right comparison, but it reminds me of more of a '90s. Judd Apatow. Early '90s comedy. Not really. No, it's not. It's not dirty. <laughs> uh, it almost, almost reminds me more of a Moonstruck type movie where it's a lot more about like cultural identity. So it's very into like if you if your Jewish great grandfather came back and met you, would he be embarrassed by you? Hmm. Uh, and it has a lot a little bit more about grief than I was expecting. It, it look you know what it kind of gave me vibes of. Um, oh God, damn it! Think, I, I, we'll see. If it's the one I was thinking of also. Hold on. I can't think of it. Like, uh, I'm, it's um, going to... Last from the Past with Brendan Fraser? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, by the way, I was watching, I was watching, I was watching uh, Bedazzled the other day, though, with Brendan oh, Fraser, and I was wow. like, this shit is well, amazing. Anyway. Oh, and it, it, it gave me vibes of Horace and Pete. Not as serious. But I get where you're coming from. Yeah, it felt like Horace and Pete meets... The SNL skit that Justin Timberlake did when he, when he's like himself like from well, coming to America talking about like future Timberlake. It doesn't go for any big laughs is the thing. It's it's so it's very subtle in the like humor part. The drama is a little broader and, and doesn't land quite as well, but it, it's good. It's fun. Okay. It's not it's light. It just it gives you a good feeling by the end of it. It's not like it, remarkable at all. Oh, I understand why it didn't it would have gotten destroyed in theaters it's just it's a middle you know mid-budget middle ambition movie okay wait karen do you like blast from the past i think it's cute i wouldn't say i like love it or anything i'll take it <laughs> i really like Blast from the past. i really like I mean, blast from the past uh, it's obviously. a cute movie <laughs> yeah the good right. smile movie i miss wait. brendan Fraser. i thought only hook i he's just so likable in that movie I he thought only like was been like the dude, cocktails. Dude. Yeah, it's it's it might be the perfect role for him. Yeah. I mean he's I think he's like him and Rachel Vice are the main reason I love the mummy so much. Like they just have the he just always was a good leading man. So yes. Karen means Tom Cruise when she says that, but you know. I mean, Karen <laughs> Karen loves Tom Cruise, but she's also not stupid, so she knows what the yeah. good mummy movie is. I <laughs> I would have loved to have watched it with her, and I probably just would have looked at her the whole time, being like, right. right? Just like put your put your uh, chin on your hand and just be like, oh, look yeah. at it, take it all in. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. she's smiling way too much for this movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I showed Sophia The Shining yesterday for the first time, and she did not like it. <laughs> I've I've thought about showing that to my boys because they really want to see it and they love horror yeah, movies. Yeah, she loved. Uh, yeah, she loved. Same reason, and it's it's too it's cerebral it's not yeah, i was gonna say it's not it's not, the, it's, not, it's not the conventional horror like she was like when is someone gonna die like she kept kept asking and it's also really like well long. they're they're already dead the people who are gonna die so uh, well, no she wanted, <laughs> well, she wanted not... to see someone get murdered and she got to see someone get murdered by the way that act scene by the way like i haven't oh, seen it in a so really good. long time it's so oh my god so good uh, when he's but yeah, like, was, I don't want to kill you. I just want to yeah, beat your brains yeah, in. Yeah, she, was, yeah. she just was not yeah. satisfied with the ending at all. Like, she just felt like really shortchanged. So you're saying uh, Kubrick was aiming a little higher than a preteen. Yeah, That's, I think. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you got Mark. Yeah, that ba- the bathroom scene is the one reason I haven't uh, um, I, shown I, it to I, them. So I'd, yeah, I mean. We just covered her eyes for that part. Yeah, that's what I probably would have to do. Because my, yeah. my kids are already obsessed with boobs. And, uh, I, 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 I'm going to say boobs. you've done most of the damage in making sure that happens. <laughs> um, I might be responsible. They also have the internet, Mark, so, you know. Oh, I know. I can tell you some stories of what we found on my... Uh, he's 10, but it was like 8 at the time. I will never... I can't wait to be much, much older to have like a real serious talk with my kids and like you guys have just this dirty stuff just ac- accessible yeah. to you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had to come out of my room at night and get to mm-hmm. Cinemax after dark and just like yeah, put it on low and then just pray to God no one came out and like <laughs> I, I 
I would have paid God good damn money asshole. to have watched Mark have that have that conversation with his son uh, while trying not to while trying not to laugh and smile. No, I mean, no, I wasn't trying not to laugh. I was pretty pissed off about it. So, I mean, he he had seen some things at eight years old that I probably didn't see. Mark's assertive. He's a very assertive father. He's very yeah. conservative in that he way. He was just jealous. He's like, you can oh, see so this now, jealous. right? Like we got, well, he writes down the website, right? and he can block. You know, you can delete your history. Like, there's yeah. it's so easy to get away with. <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> that's really what you were mad at him. Like, you didn't, you didn't Andrew, cover your tracks. Did I not raise you right? Not, not only did he not cover his tracks, but he screenshotted everything. Oh, <laughs> his whole, his whole picture. <laughs> I, lo- I love that your main annoyance is you were stupid about this. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. That's what happened. Right. Yeah, that was ridiculous. It's time to be alive. All right. All what right. have you been watching, Clayton? Uh, well, yeah, so The Shining with her. I showed her. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna show her The Fugitive. I think that might be fun yeah. for her. Mm, maybe I think she might like because it's, it's not like smart. Like I mean, it's no. smart. I mean, it's not smart like in a way that she needs to, like kind of follow stuff. Like it's just chase stuff. But I thought I thought about it, so I might try to show it to her today. Um, what did I see? What did I see? Did I see anything? Um, oh, I'm season six, episode two of Shit's Creek. Yay! Where are, you finding, where are you finding season six now? Uh, on demand, which is awful because it's not okay. HD on demand. Yeah. So it is like I have gone from like my UHD, like Netflix. Now I have to watch it on yeah. BIOS on demand where there isn't an HD and it is like pixelated and I'm like I almost don't want to watch it. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for Netflix, I think. But in random random, but have you have you thought about showing her VH um Super Eight? Uh yes, I offered it to her once. She says you don't want to watch it at that moment. Really? I tried to get my kids to watch it too, Joey, and they they saw the trailer and were like, Nope. Oh, yeah. And I think also, it'd be perfect. It's kind of horror, yeah. it's kind of yeah. it's got yeah. also has a really, almost uh, their age. Like, a really bad payoff though. Super yeah, does not but they don't know that. No, right. Yeah, but first, I don't know. First, first, I, I, I had all this promise and stuff, and then I showed her yeah. Teen Spirit actually, and she uh, wasn't like she liked it a little bit, but not that much. Yeah, I don't, think, was, I don't think a trailer has good. ever. I don't think I've ever been more excited by a trailer than I was with Super Eight. Oh yeah, like it, it was, was just trailer. nostalgic and awesome. Yeah. And then boom, nothing. And then nothing. Yep. And then, I like it. And then JJ yeah, Abrams does what the trailer better. It does, and just can't stick a goddamn oh, stop thing. it. Low Rise of Skywalker, f you always, Mark. You think you think he sticks everything? Or are you gonna are you gonna no. swear? Lost I thought forever? you were gonna I thought you were gonna piss on Lost, but she well, was I mean, around for the end of. What? what but wait, was he I, part of Lost ending? He created no, he created Lost, but he he had handed it off to Lindelof and Q's. and no, and don't not stick a landing. And it was awesome. Was it? He got you, all the getting was good. Karen, do you love Lost? I don't. I don't know if I, I know this. I do love you. Lost. I do. Yes. Oh, oh. oh God. God. You care? I hate. I hate when you two bond. I know. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I love when you it's my. It's literally my favorite. because oh. it's so rare, and we. And I know. And when it happens, I'm like, oh. And yeah. Mark just feels like validated. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst part if it wasn't for that i wouldn't care <laughs> karen this is what it is you are the you are like the karen of the internet that's validating the white guy karenness <laughs> of him and giving him like that 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 fuel to keep on going uh, occasionally mark gets it right now <laughs> <laughs> you just said like his wife mm. All right, so here, this is where I put them back on separate planes. Get ready. All right. Okay. So, actually, no, no. I I want to go. To, actually, I have two other topics before this. Um, Judas and the Black Messiah trailer. Mm. Yeah, it looks yummy, amazing. Yummy, in my tummy. Kaluuya gonna win the actor? I mean, go for it, Kaluuya. I'll take it. He's not. I I he's in my predictions now. He's not number one though. No, not yet. I don't have predictions set up yet, but he would be my number one. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a cool call to make. He's in my five, but he's just not number one. Yeah. Uh, I, my five, by the way, looks so fivey. I hate that it, it exists right now. Like I feel like I almost look at him like, yeah, that's the five, and I can walk away. Yeah, I don't, I don't have Kaluuya, but August, I think I, but, I, we but, might have, yeah. I might have, yeah. I'd be curious to hear what you guys have, just because he. I mean, that looked amazing uh, in the time. It seems like a timely type. 
I'll read it to you. Yeah. Uh, Bill yeah, Murray, uh, Bill Murray on the rocks. Nah. Uh, Delroy Lindo, the five bloods. Uh, Gary Oldman, Mank. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins, the father. Daniel Kaluuya, Judas and the Black Messiah. I have yeah. two of those five. The other three I have is I have Matt Damon. And still water. I have Joaquin Phoenix for whatever it becomes called. What, come on, come on, maybe. And Tom it's Hanks so, for News of the World. It's so come on. Come yeah, it's all. It's, but those are all the the main. Okay. None of none of what I we're hear, saying is unique. Yeah, all those I are. There are a lot of former Oscar winners in there, so it could yeah, be it could exactly. be time. Well, that's the thing. I if mean, you go deeper, there really isn't uh, there. You, there aren't a whole lot of top heavy first timers in the until we it would have uh, been uh, until we had festival season. Well, not. Uh, yeah, so uh, looking uh, at, looking at the law, uh, looking at my ten, uh, the only newcomer would be Delroy Lindo because everyone else has been nominated before or won before. Yeah, and then outside of that, eleven through twenty are all wait one, two, three. There are four four former nominee slash winners, and that would be like Affleck. Kevin Costner, uh, Chalamet, and um, what's it? Oh yeah, John David Washington. Uh, oh, Tom Hanks again. That's what it is. I have Tom Hanks twice because he has Greyhound and uh, News of the World. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Uh, the other trailer I want to start with. So Judas and the Black Messiah looks incredible. Everyone's kind of like on that page that it looks great. Yeah, it looks. I, I'm. I mean, I certainly am never gonna not be excited for a good. Like drama studio, it's it's that movie don't they don't make anymore. So I always like. Well, I mean, I just love that it's like the black assassination of Jesse James. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, like it's going to be so. It could be added. I mean, that's the ambition. It seems like. Like he's Stanfield. I think he's going to rip into it too, though. I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to. Yes, he looked awesome too. You're right. Yeah. I I do wonder if he might end up being the lead, and Kuli is more of a supporter. Oh, when it comes down it, to it, it could because he's yeah. he's got the story of what's going on on both sides. That I can yeah. actually be how, how I predict it. Like and if the that's the realm. case, I got I, when I sweep it. Yeah, it, it, uh, it depends on what happens with Lindo. If Lindo ends up supporting, that would be a yeah. great race. If he's yeah. if he's the main one and it's basically him against whatever happens with the trials of Chicago Seven. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't I don't think they're. Kind of throw Lindo. So I don't think they're gonna try to convince him to go support it. I think it'd be first of all, I think it'd be dumb, and yeah. and I think it would be also really gross category fraud. Yeah, yeah, but yeah definitely. But Judas, Judas and the Black yeah. Messiah coming sometime in 2021 it could be the qualifying run before February 28th. So that's what we have to look for. Um, the other trailer that dropped, uh. Along the way, excuse me, I'm just like hiccuping. I couldn't like not hiccup. Um, yeah. Was I'm thinking of anything from yeah. Charlie Kaufman? Yeah, and it looked delightful. I delightful is not the word I would use, but it looks amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea so what that movie was really supposed to be about, and I'm still not entirely sure. But the trailer was not That's- at all what I was <laughs> expecting from the title, and. <laughs> I was just Either. like, holy crap, this looks really good. Yeah. I, uh, I do know what it's about because I know what the book is about. And it's a really, really interesting take on that. That's where I was great. Can I just say I was deeply offended just for like 10 seconds, though, in the trailer when I saw Tony Collette was Jesse Plemons mother. Yeah. Yeah, was, I was yeah. like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> She's timeless. She's not Jesse Plemons mother. She's only and then years older. Uh, yeah, but but then there's like a part in the trailer where they show her looking younger, so I was like, okay, this may be a play on something, so I'm okay with this. Um, but yeah, it looked it looked great too. I like I like how we got a Jesse Plemons week and we didn't even realize yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, be good. Um, I I had he he was in my year in advance predictions for supporting actor for this, and I don't know if he's because it depends on how good Dave because David Thewlis is the dad, right? That that was David yeah. Thewlis. Yeah, it depends on how good he is, because like if he gets like Anne Hathaway and just throwing up <laughs> to Lee because it doesn't matter. So D- David Thewlis could run the gauntlet or something like that. But uh, anyways, it just, it looks good. Like I miss Charlie Kaufman so much. And that one's like, coming to Netflix, right? Yeah. So we want to pay thirty bucks to see it. 
No, we don't have to pay thirty. You do not have to Marcus pay thirty dollars. So bitter over the Disney <laughs> Plus so thing. It's it's it's, it's re- like the more uh, I think about it, the more angry I get about yeah, it. Yeah, get angry. Yeah, <laughs> except not too angry because Disney does a lot of uh, you know because they own everything. <laughs> well, they advertise well for us. Well, right? Mark's like I'm very angry about this. And the thing need, is, yeah. between that happening yeah. and the Paramount, the Paramount decrees being reversed it's ridiculous what's going to happen in the industry disney literally will own pretty much everything in hollywood within a couple of years it's good it's going to be it's it's a little worrisome a little bit <sighs> but here is something to make i don't know if it's gonna make karen happy i think it, i think it can make karen happy <laughs> Okay. I, I think I, I think it can because it's, it's a, it was a good realization of something. So, getting ready to unleash predictions in the in the next few weeks, I have decided to not do it the week to week thing for this month, especially because everything keeps shifting every ten seconds. Yeah. I feel like it just it does me no good personally <laughs> to keep doing to having to go back and and you know whatever. So, what I have right now, okay. <clears throat> I have a list of director predictions, right? About a hundred people are on, you know, because I list, you know, a long, a long list there because I want to, because I like to see the whole scope. And and my general thinking, just to let everyone kind of know how I look at predictions, I think if you are considering one thing in one category, then I think you can list it in others, even though it's like, listen, it puts something at 88. Like, I don't really believe that's going to jump to the top five at some point, but I think we have to look, I think what happens is as a, as an industry and why people yell about diversity is that we really don't see the, the, the entire picture of what can be considered. We really, if we're, if I'm just listing 10 movies as only, and you know, Voters come to award circuit to look at these predictions and they're like, okay, I'm gonna look for these 10 movies only. But if they look at, you know, a list of a hundred, then they're like, oh, you know, I didn't know that, you know, you know, uh, radioactive came out this year with Rosman and Pike. Maybe I'll go check that out. That's screener that just came. Yeah, you don't have to miss that. You can miss that. <laughs> so anyway, so a hundred directors I have listed. 33 are women, Karen. A third, so not not what should be yet, mm-hmm. but a third, and I think if I'm, I have to go back and like really look at this. I, I'm going to say this, but I, I think it's going to be just more for <laughs> uh, look right now more than actual like. Uh, Is that truth. your number sixty-seven through one hundred? Uh, no, yeah. no, <laughs> no, it's not. No. Okay, it, good. I was no, just checking. Yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> I think that's the most amount of women I have listed in the director predictions at this point in time ever. Because even like one through 60, 20 are women. Actually, I'm sorry, 21 are women. And then the rest are, are then you get 12 more uh, going out. So I wanted to look at some of the this is going to be more like a picture director kind of talk about about what what's there. But everyone knows that my year in advance prediction winner was Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, which Clayton is notorious for like some kind of cool calls and then some to the wonder calls. So I understand this all the time. Nomadland, not for nothing right now. Landscape. I mean, Clayton could be right this year because it's the movie that's going everywhere right now. That is everywhere that's going to be available. I'm not saying that necessarily this means it's going to be amazing, but it, it's going to that searchlight believes in it. And Chloe Zhao is going to have the Eternals, which is also eligible this year. Yeah, see if it hits before. Yeah, it's that's going to be March. Right. March. So Eternals is still in the hunt. Do so I think the Eternals is going to be a director player? No, but she gets listed twice, so that's good for her. Um, so she's my number one still. Uh, also picked up Shaka King for Judas and the Black Messiah, because why the hell not? Yeah, why not? Um, black directors. I mean, listen, we still have a big problem with overall diversity, because, like, you know, there's not plentiful black directors or Latino directors and, you know, in everyone. So, but Shaka King, you know, for every, uh, you know, once in a while, like, everyone's, like, a first at some point, 
John Singleton was was a first, and you know, then came Steve McQueen, and you know, Shaka King could come in and just you know, blow the doors off Judas and the Black Messiah, and it has a really good aesthetic. It could be, you know, it could be something pretty pretty spectacular. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, definitely. I'm trying to see something. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, something with Shaka King. What about? Uh, I was trying to see what his he directed episodes of Shrill, High Maintenance, and People of Earth. Uh, the only movie before this was Newlyweds. 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 I'm sorry. Oh yes, Newlyweds. I never saw that. It's okay. It's okay. I don't remember. Yeah, it's from 2013. Very well. I don't. I don't. I don't Did you watch remember Shrill? being bad. I have not seen Shrill. Karen, do you watch Real? I haven't watched it, no. Mark, do you hear good? I've heard good things about Real. Uh, Mark, do you watch Real? I've never heard of it. Uh, of course, because about women. Yeah. It's uh, on Hulu. Yeah, it's I on. Oh, uh, I don't watch. I have Hulu, but that's like the one I watch the least. because uh, first of all, <laughs> Hulu, if you're listening, I love you, but please fix your UI interface. It is awful to navigate on a Samsung TV. Like is yeah. terrible. I hate for some wait. reason I can't get it to it's load. Very, on my it's a very specific. Well, it's very maybe specific they just don't like TV. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just changed so yeah, it online and it's better. Uh yeah, they did change it. I still don't like it. I still, I, still, I, I whatever it was before this last one. That's when it was looking good, and then now it's like all like kind of whatever. And I think be, the greens are a little too much. Be better, Hulu. We yeah, be better, be better at UI. Uh, so. Uh, Shark King's in my five. He's number four. But David Fincher is obviously in there because mm-hmm. Fincher's Fincher. Yeah. Uh, Francis Lee for Ammonite because I think Ammonite's going to be huge too. Me too. It's, I mean, it's, it's hard. To, like, listen. It's also, hard I, I was talking to Sam Coffee about. I was to Sam Coffee about this, and he was like, "In a year like this, right? Mm-hmm. And especially given we just did it for Renee Zellweger." Wouldn't it be great to just wash the reader out of our mouths and give Kate Winslet something really substantial in terms of an Oscar win? And she'd be two time best actress winner, which no one would be anti. No one. And, awesome. and by the way, say what you will, and I think we're all in agreement here, she nearly won last time for Steve Jobs. Mm-hmm. She really? nearly did. Yes. Okay. She won the Globe. She won BAFTA. The, the only yeah. one she would, if Alicia Vikander went lead or. Got uh-huh. that messed up with Ex Machina, Danish Girl. Hundred percent, she would have won for Steve Jobs. Mm-hmm. I don't, near, I, for near. some reason, I don't remember her being that close, but I'm glad to hear that she was hundred percent number two. I, yeah. I, I, it's like I, yeah, go ahead, Karen. Oh, it's just it's funny because she feels like she has two already, and so it's weird when you yeah. go like, oh no, right. she only has one. Oscar, I know. So yeah, it makes sense for her to win a second one, and if it. If this movie turns out as good as it sounds on paper, then yeah, yeah, yeah. she definitely right. could be cruising um, to that second Oscar finally. Re- recap it. for you, recap for you, Mark. It was uh, Lisa Vikander won against uh, Kate Winslet, Jennifer Jason Lee, Hateful Eight, Rachel McAdams, Spotlight, Rooney Mara, Carol. So you can say Rooney Mara maybe could have been number two, but she never know. But the uh, guys, will win. She never. I think the, the Winslet matter. won Globe and BAFTA. I think that was one of those years that it always it felt Vikander the whole time, maybe or something. Because I don't no. remember, I don't well, remember it, having it, any it one was, of those four or, close. Well, it's because it, that was that was the year that category fraud really, <clears throat> yeah. Like everyone was, I was pissed yeah. too. Listen, I think at least Vikander's lead in Danish Girl also, mm-hmm. and there were also people who preferred her in Ex Machina. Oh yeah, like a lot of yeah, yeah a too. lot of people, and there are people who believe that she won for Ex Machina for the Danish mm-hmm. Girl, like. They just mm-hmm. kind of put those two together. Mm-hmm. Um, Rudy Mara being in supporting like was egregious. At least if a candor there uh, in that category, Do you know, I remember Diane Ladd uh, doing that, that um, red carpet interview. Uh, they asked like about her, like uh, something with joy. And she was like, well, I got two leading performances in my category. And she called that shit out, which was fucking great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's something with anyone else category fraud. They, I mean, there were, actually, <laughs> Steve Carell committed category fraud, but that's because he refuses to go supporting in anything he does. That's and odd. he was he, yeah. he went lead for the big short, and I will never yeah. understand why. And yeah, that is why he yeah. will probably not win an Oscar. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, it's, it's very, yeah. I mean, it limits your chances pretty well. Yeah. Well, right? yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great, great leading men who've won supporting Oscars. I mean, Clooney and Pitt recently just come to mind. Yeah. So, yeah. You mean, Two time Academy Award. <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Mark Johnson. Hey, listen, for being we will you. see. You know how they, in trailers, you know how they say Academy Award winner. Yes, I know. And we will Brad see. Pitt. No, 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 listen. Oh, we will okay. see if they say two time Academy Award winner oh. or if they just say Academy Award winner. Oh, well, no one ever says two time. Oh, bullshit. Academy. I see uh, it all the uh, time. Uh, unless it's a voiceover. A voiceover is a two time Academy Award winner. We will winner. see. We will see. Jane Fonda. I couldn't think Great. of the time Academy Award winner fast enough, and I just went to hey, Jane Fonda. I, I, I thought of Roger fact, Deakins, and my I, goal is I, I just want a trailer to mention Roger yeah. Deakins. I know, right? That would be amazing. Listeners, I want, please, I challenge somebody to find me a trailer is this for a two movie time that Brad Pitt starred in as an actor. And um before he won his oscar so before yeah. 2019 no you, no you're 100 you're, you're no I'm, I'm telling you already, I'm telling you already now that you're correct i know I'm right. uh, on, on on no correct in the sense of after he <laughs> won for 12 years a slave he it, i know 100 percent in the big short trailer it says he's academy award nominee brad pitt and listen that's that's he it is, was it he was, a, was an it, oscar winner Yes. But he's not an Oscar winning actor, and that's what they're pushing on you is it so stars what, this guy. So why, does Matt, so why does Matt Damon say Academy Award winner Matt Damon? Does it say that? Like give me yes. a trailer with him. So show me a trailer with that too, because I'm curious. With, with I don't Damon. doubt I don't and doubt ben Affleck. Affleck. ben Affleck used to say Academy Award winner Ben Affleck. Uh, I, so show it to me because I haven't I don't remember that. I don't know why that would be any different because they're man, they're not a virus. I hate you so. Which much. of which of any of the Matt Damon movies would you like us to like, patrol for? I <laughs> feel like we've heard this argument a million times, I but know, Mark I is know. suddenly confused need, about I, it I, for the first I need time. It. I need to be Never. valid. Oh, here it is, Mark. Wait, in in by the C, it says that he's Academy Award nominee, and in Big Short, it says it, and it might even say it in Allied as well. Karen, so, are you surprised that, that a middle-aged white? It was this man is relitigating the past play because they were trying <laughs> to win him a, an acting Oscar, which is fine. Mm-hmm. And I think Ad Astra also said Academy Award nominee Brad Pitt also, if I'm very correctly. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good now. We're done. I know. I <laughs> I just I just want you to know that you're wrong. Like this is not even, this this is like not even black and white. This is just wrong and right. Like it is. He's an acad- he was an Academy Award winner before Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but he was not an Academy Award winning actor. Sure. But we don't He's refer a- to him as that. Okay. These are the conversations Mark goes to bed arguing with his wife about. <laughs> so back to this. Um, let's round out those women we were talking about. So uh, Em and I – oh, so we're, we were talking about Kate Winslet. That's where this all stemmed from. Kate Winslet could be building that narrative already for the year, and that would be awesome. And I think, again, something – Everyone would be on board with and be like, go ahead, Kate, get your second Oscar, get accept it via Zoom, because that's what's probably going to happen. And then we'll go from there. Feel good. Um, but 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 also, let, but I still would like to say I'm still believing that my homegirl, Michelle Pfeiffer, could win an Oscar this year. I'm hoping. Hope springs eternal for you. Never know. Aww. Or prize winner of Defiance, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that the one about the teacher, or was that another one? The, that's the, the teacher. teacher. Yeah. Julianne Moore. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then it was, that was the that was the that was the English I'm teacher. Trying, the I'm, trying think, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to think. I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't. You know what's funny? They're both yeah. bad movies. English teacher and prize winner of Defiance, Ohio. But I want to say, I can't even remember prize winner. But I can remember how like bad English teacher was, but I think I totally watched English teacher again though. I need to I, I, I need to remember stuff. Like I hate movies that are like Mark describes this a lot. Like he hates movies that are not overtly bad and they're just like you know they're nothing. They're just like a nothing burger. They're just there. And then it, to write about it, it's also the worst because you're just like Yeah, that was that was radioactive for me a couple weeks ago. Like it's there are movies that are not bad, but you're just like, I'm getting nothing out of this. Those yeah. movies where you're between like two, two and a half stars, and you're just yeah. like, oh my god, what do I do with this movie? Um, the other, another director in my five, Ron Howard Hillbilly Elegy, that Amy Adams narrative is going to play this year. I, I can't Which figure that one out. It's either going to be a, an R rating. 
Ooh. Is that bad? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, it's interesting, it's I think. Okay, good. Oh, I mean, I, oh my God. I forgot to tell you guys what I showed. Uh, 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 Karen, you asked me what, what we've watched lately. You know, I showed uh, Sophia last night, and she, and she loved Parenthood. Yay! Oh, no way. You can keep it. Her- oh, my God. First of all, I just, for, cool. Jessica had never seen it before either. And first of all, when I asked her at the beginning, when I was like, oh, let's watch Parenthood, she was like, I've seen Parenthood. I'm like, she was like, the original, right? And I was like, yeah, because I thought she had interpreted it as like the original, meaning different from the TV show. And then when she started mm-hmm. watching it, she was like, wait, this isn't Lindsay Lohan. She was like, wait, I don't, I've never seen this before. She was like, that was Lindsay she was Lohan. I was like, parent yeah. trap. So I was like, no doofus. <laughs> and then, um, and then we, and then we like whole family love. Happy anniversary, by the way. Hey. <laughs> Guys, a very little uh, shade in that just now. Uh, I have the back comment. I love it so, but she got snarky with me when I when I said, "Have you seen this?" She went, "Yes." So that's why I get multi to do this now. There's very few times that husbands are able to be right. So when we take it, we fucking run like as far as. Um, but yeah, she loved Parenthood, and and Sophia loved Parenthood. She, when I told her that was Joaquin Phoenix, she was like, "No, it's not. This is little brother." I was like, "Well, it's because he's a young Joaquin Phoenix." <laughs> so yeah, I guess it looks like his little brother. She just, and by the way, I really, I didn't realize she has like really no concept of who Keanu Reeves is. Like, That's Keanu Reeves. She's like, "Who is that?" Oh and we've seen like two or three movies with him already. That's so funny. Yeah. The line that the grandma says, where she's like. When I was born, Grover Cleveland was president. I say that, like, but I'll say, you know, when I was born, Jimmy Carter yeah. was president, and nobody knows what I'm talking yeah. about. There's a, <laughs> but it really I, does make you seem so. The old. grandma was her favorite character, and then at the end, she's awesome. There's a little thing that she does. That I re- like when I watched it yesterday that made me just remember being a kid. And it's at the end when they're putting uh, the cigars in each other's mouths after the baby's born, mm-hmm. and she does like, the scene, like, like just blows it, like it's the cutest little thing. Uh, and it's just so good. And Jason <laughs> Robards is an asshole in that movie. I know, like, I mean, he's a great actor. Yes. But he's such an asshole, like, from beginning to end. And so is Rick Moranis. <laughs> Jessica was like, every 90s person is in this movie. I was like, yeah, everyone. It's so good. Uh, and I and that I love that Jessica, and that Sophia said, oh, that's the mom from Edward Scissorhands. I was like, yes, it is. Diane Weist. Aww, yep. I'm raising her right. I feel good. Uh, Hillbilly Elegy. So, yeah, <laughs> our rating, hour and 56 minutes. Thank you for that. Um, so we're under two hours and it's, uh, co it's written, adapted from the JD Vance book by Vanessa Taylor, who co-wrote Shape of a Water. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, for people who don't know, it's, uh, synopsis reads, a Yale law student drawn back into his hometown grapples with family history, Appalachian values, and the American dream. Mm-hmm. It's West, it sounds Western, Mark. It could go either way. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. What's your favorite Ron Howard movie, everyone? Oh, favorite. And I, and I, I know say, what my favorite is. And I'd say that and I'd say that he has a lot of great movies. I kind of I think he gets kind of either shit on mm-hmm. or like dismissed as a director. And I think he is a very very good director. He has a lot of definite definitely yeah. good ones. His, so, one of my uh, favorites is Apollo 13. So, uh, um, his um, best movie is Apollo 13 to me. His, my favorite is Night Shift. So wait, let, let me. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna run through his filmography. Only count the amount of great movies he's made. Okay. <laughs> great. All right. Yep. Okay. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> no, it's not even good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just got it. Grand Theft Auto. No. Night Shift. Close. I can't, call, I can't call it great. Splash is great. Hold on. Let me read through them first, Joe. Count and then we'll right, talk about them. All right, Night Shift, Splash, Cocoon, Gung Ho, Willow, Parenthood, Backdraft, Far and Away, The Paper, Apollo 13, Ransom, Ed TV, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, A Beautiful Mind, The Missing, Cinderella Man, The Da Vinci Code, Frost Nixon, Angels and Demons, The Dilemma, Rush, in the Heart of the Sea, Inferno, Solo, A Star Wars Story, Pavarotti, and that's it. And Rebuilding Paradise this year, the documentary. Well, I was, oh, yeah, I, I was Rebuilding Paradise. We'll count that. I counted eight. I counted two. Ooh, I, really? I have 13. Ooh. 
Good. What do you have, Karen? I have 11. Oh, okay. Good. What two did you count, Joe? Uh, Splash and Apollo 13. Those are the only two that count as great. That's great. Mm. Not, not the paper? Oh, no. I love the paper. Oh, I know. I love the, the paper. The is so good. Oh, no. If you went to good movies, he has you know, a lot of paper? good movies. I, 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 yeah, and I went. I probably went with really good, like three and a half and better. Yeah, I'd probably I probably count. I also call Backdraft great, but oh, like yeah. the story is mm-hmm. not. I love Backdraft. I love Backdraft. So. Well, that's thing i the, like it but it's not great otherwise i would say night shift is great yeah, yeah. i mean how many, how many of you had willow on your list i did not i did not count willow no. i didn't count willow oh, i'm alone willow yeah I I, love willow. willow reminds me a lot of <laughs> again me and joey were talking about this that's a channel 11 movie from our childhood yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I, I was 11, 11 years old okay that's yeah i love definitely Netflix. a movie if i've seen all of it i've seen it in about 13 pieces hold on let me ask everyone this how many counted far and away nope I well, maybe Karen. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, no one's putting their fingers up right now, just Karen. <laughs> and I, listen, I'm probably the only one that also said Ransom. I really do love that I'm movie. I'm probably the only yeah, one that counted I Ransom. Really I, I think Ransom is probably... I counted Ransom yeah, also. I, uh, I think Ransom's my favorite movie of his. I would count Ransom as a, a good really movie. It's a really great thriller. Yeah. Ransom, I think is my number one movie of that year. One or two. It's between that and The Crucible. Really? Yeah. I, never, yeah. Over, I, don't, I don't remember us discussing this. Yeah. I don't. Uh, definitely I, not my oh, number one of 1996. Yeah, it, but. It, it, it's up there. <laughs> but listen, I, I think Rene Russo should have got nominated for that. I think Mel Gibson's best performance is in that movie as an actor. Terry Sinise is fun. It's yeah. Great, yeah. And I came back to A Beautiful Mind. I didn't like it at the time. I've come back to it. It's great. That's my yeah. personal. Oh, it's a great movie. My personal favorite of his. Yeah, and I love Cinderella Man. I think it's, that's my number yeah, one to that year too. Cinderella Man is so overlooked, yeah. so ignored, yeah. and it's such a great movie. Great Russell Crowe performance is overlooked. Yeah, it's a yeah. uh, it's a good movie. Good. I'm glad we're all on this. Mostly. Paul Giamatti should have been nominated no, that year. Should have won. You mean should've, he should have won? He lost. Yeah. Fucking George Clooney because he won director and supporting actor. All right. I mean, um. Good. Clooney's not good at Syriana. Like, oh like, God, like, like in it. Well, no, like, I was uh, really mad when Paul Giamatti didn't win that award. Yeah, he won SAG. Like, they gave Clooney an Oscar for directing in an acting category. His should read Academy Award winning something else, not an actor. <laughs> That's what that should, that should be. Uh, uh, I mean, he also had Good Night, Good Luck that year too, I, which is great. Like, if he would have got, actually, movie. I would have accepted him getting nominated for that and winning for that. Over Syria. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love. I think Burns. his supporting performance in Good Night and Good Luck is better than Syriana. Yes. Really? Oh. His yeah. scene. His scene oh. where he's arguing with the the general. You know, yeah. who decides? Oh yeah. So that's good. amazing. Yeah, it's a really good back and forth, yeah. man. Who? Uh, you? Fin- finish you have up. Let's go so some of the more directors. Uh, Aaron Sorkin. We're gonna have the Trial of the Chicago Seven. Steven Spielberg. West Side Story. Regina King. One Night in Miami. She's in my ten. I'm going for it. Hmm. Why not? You love Regina King. I mean, yeah, really she's do. she's she's my Damien Chazelle. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, good. That's a good yeah. choice. Yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry. Actually, uh, well, I won't say Damien Chazelle because I haven't seen her direct movie yet. She's my Scoot McNeary. Oh no, she's my Scoot. She's she's you know she's a little hot. Listen, I've met right. Regina, I've seen <laughs> Regina King. I saw Regina King in person once because I, I had interviewed um, Coleman Domingo, uh, and I came out and Regina King was standing there, and I was like. Hi, Regina King. And she was like, hi. And I was like, I love you so much. And she was like, oh, thank you. That's so sweet. And I was like, okay. and I just <laughs> laughed. Like, I was just like. Feature. Uh, yeah, this is the first uh, directorial feature. This is a directorial. She, did a, she had a documentary and a bunch of TV shows, but this oh, is her first feature. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we have that. Uh, Sofia Coppola on The Rocks. Uh, Ramen Barani for The White Tiger. It's supposed to be Netflix's secret weapon. So get ready for that. Oh. What, what is it called? The White Tiger? Tiger. What'd you it's say? A, it's about the white, the white tiger. Yeah. White. <laughs> white tiger. Oh boy. Did uh, I look up again? No. Wait. So you just Marshall. can't hear me, or am I just saying white? I, my kids were yelling, and I had <laughs> I was oh, muted and yelling at them when it was happening. So the white tiger is that what you said? White tiger. Yes. Oh God. Oh, like, stop it! It hurts my cool, ears. Like, like, like cool whip. <laughs> no. And we're back. No. Oh, okay, I'm done. That's enough. 
<laughs> all right. Can you guys hear me? You're all hearing me, right? Oh, I heard you. The hey, whole... what was, what yeah. was Damien? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Clay, what was Damien Chazelle's first film? Whiplash. Yeah. Whiplash? Whiplash. It wasn't his first film either. Oh, yeah, that's right. It wasn't. Oh, well, whatever. It's yeah. first I mean, I want to hear your... Uh, no, it wasn't his first feature either. Oh, well, no, no, it's the first one. Right. Whatever it is. So, all right, White Tiger, also rated R. Okay. Uh, film adaptation of the Man Booker prize-winning bestseller tells the story of Balram uh, Alwai, a man born to poverty in a village in India, and his epic journey to the top of the heap. So it's Slumdog Lion. Oh, okay. The kid is supposed to be like, Incredible, it's a ten-year-old boy that we're supposed to be watching out for. Uh, we have Tom McCarthy back following. Oh, we got Stillwater, which sounds. And good. he and he made a mediocre movie earlier this year, and that's what happened when he made Spotlight. So this is all the ingredients he needs for a good movie. Uh, Denny Villeneuve for Dune. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be getting a trailer before the end of the month, according to it's, Timothy Chalamet. Is that still supposed to come out this year? Yeah, it's slated for it Christmas. Should. They yep. didn't set that print yeah, on yeah, every, Everything I have here is either yeah, it'll slated. Yeah, be $30 so expect, on... Expect to yeah. Stop it. I swear to God, <laughs> I will burn the I'm gonna world. have to invite a bunch of people over, which is the whole point of not going to a theater. Yeah, exactly. That's what's going to happen. Yep. Um, yeah, or everything I have invite here, all of your kids' friends over. Yeah, everything I have them. here is either slated or, like, expected to drop before 2021, uh, but obviously a few could fall out. Uh, we got Mike Mills for Come On, Come On, Florian Zeller for The Father, Nikki Caro for Mulan, because, you know, she's, she's going to be eligible, so we'll see what happens there. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, again, looking, widening the portrait here. Uh, Pete Doctor for Soul, understanding that directors for animated movies are going to have a hard time probably forever, mm-hmm. but... I, listen, I think Andrew Stanton, not close, but I think he was like top twenty for Wally. Maybe, Next. yeah. I think there was a there was a moment in time where there was a movement there. Yeah, I predicted Wally for Best Picture that year. I remember over the dark. And I feel like once it happens, unlike some other things, like I think once it happens, it'll be easier for it to happen again. Yeah, it, unlike women getting nominated for I, director. Yeah, I, 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 it would be very similar to the double director. Is that what you just said? Sorry, I have a delay. No, no. No, oh, no. oh no! We, it, like when we couldn't get uh, like the Coen Brothers, the Coen Brothers like broke the dual uh, director nomination thing because Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Ferris. I think that was such a sticking point for Little Miss Sunshine that year, and then mm-hmm. it all worked out. Um, Taika Waititi for next goal wins. Maybe. I'm, I don't I'm know. It's interesting. Unlikely. I would be, I would be totally on board with that, obviously. But everything that he has said about that movie sounds like he doesn't think that it's anything that Oscar would look at. Like it's not that type of movie. But then I don't know. He yeah. could just be saying that too. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, and, and but Searchlight's given it a position that they have a lot of faith in it. I mean, yeah. hey, he just won an Oscar, so I mean, he probably if, said the same about Judge a Rabbit too. So yeah, who knows? yeah. true story. Uh, Paul Greengrass, News of the World, Spike Lee, The Five Bloods, uh, Janexa Bravo for Zola. God, I want to see that movie. Uh, I think people have been scre- uh, watching it. Oh yeah, I saw it at Sundance. It's uh, it's really, I, I don't even know how to put it into words, which is funny because I actually wrote the review on it. But I, it, it's a movie that I think is going to land really well with some people and be completely alienating for a lot of mm. other people. Nice. Um, I have it at twenty one because who the hell knows at, anymore? But Christopher Nolan Tenet. <laughs> Yeah, well, it could be could be twenty one, <laughs> could be eleven. It's all it's nothing's right, nothing's wrong with that movie. Uh, which follows it up with Wes Anderson for the French Dispatch. It got pulled from the calendar, but did not get given a new date. And there is discussion of it getting rescheduled for qualifying. Yeah, I didn't I didn't drop it yet, just because they yeah. didn't make it seem like it's next year. They just don't know where to put it yet. Yeah. Uh, Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. 
Because, because of I course, I love to dream. Yeah, uh, Lisa Tommy for respect. I just hope respect is good. Like, I hope it's I, not life. Yeah. I hope it's not lifetime movie like I'm, level. I'm, I'm slightly right. concerned, but we'll see. Yeah, it's also very, very long. I believe. Is it? I think I saw someone tweet that it's over two and a half hours. Uh, some listen. Some biopics need to be long because you, if you're covering such an iconic person, sometimes there's too much, there's too little that's covered, and that's what makes it feel yeah. Like, even I mean, a lot of times, I think recently we've done well with the take a moment in time from someone and focus on that because of that issue. You know, too yeah. often, otherwise you wind up with a three-hour movie, and, and not everyone can make it work. You know, Malcolm yeah. X is the exception, not the rule. Yeah. The movie uh, is um, co-written by the uh, person who won the Oscar for Thelma and Louise, mm. Callie Corey. Awesome. Uh, so we got Charlie Kaufman. I'm thinking of anything. Miranda July, Kajillionaire. Um, should be seeing that soon. Looks yeah. fun. Nothing special, but looks fun. Focus is excited about it, but I don't know how... It got very mixed reactions at Sundance, but yeah, a lot no, of people really liked Sundance. it. The people who liked it really liked it. And yeah. then the it people did, who just thought it was okay were just, they kind of forgot about it. Yeah, it didn't, that, I mean, you would know better than me, but well, from, from you know, 3,000 miles away, it didn't sound like the reception was marked down for contention. Yeah. Uh, Lee Isaac Chung for Minari. Got great reviews out of Sundance. Oh my gosh, that would make me so happy. That movie's beautiful. Yeah. What's it called? Minari. Minari. Okay. Minari. A24. They do wonders. Yeah, I think I've heard of that one. I really want Steven Young to get nominated. He's oh, so yeah. good. Yeah, he's in my top 20 for actor. Nice. He's going to awesome. need to. He's 13. He actually could really navigate his way up there so it'd be actually pretty good would he be lead or supporting isn't it more the it's like the son narrates the f- parents story i would say i would say stephen young is the, the is the lead in that it could kind of go either way though like it's maybe not egregious uh, but like yeah be a close call i guess what they see for as a... me it feels yeah for me it feels very clear that stephen young is the lead but mm, yeah Okay. We, we've said that before. But if like, they, uh, what? <laughs> but that's the thing. If they really just want to get him nominated, and they feel like supporting actor is easier, I think it would be category fraud. But I also would just be happy to see him nominated for yeah. it. So I don't know. I maybe this wouldn't is, be so mad this about is the it. Ex- exact same conversation we can just plug in in, in six months if Del Worthen ends up supporting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's category fraud, but we're happy he's in. Yeah. No. Whatever. But like. No, all because yeah. if he gets nominated for supporting and yeah, not for I, that, is the, that is the math that Netflix is doing. It like how pissed will people be compared to? Can we just win with it? Yeah, I mean, this, I, think uh, Delroy, I think Delroy oh, could win lead though. Oh god, uh, but, yeah. I was, I was just curious: is it is it English or is it Korean? I think it's both, right? Both. It's both. Yeah. So yeah, is it? It's, it's not their official mm-hmm. submission, though, right? Do we know? Country? No, it's, it's American. No, 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 no. Country. It's an American film. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's about a Korean family that moves. It's set to in Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I thought you just meant in yeah, the language. No. Yeah, yeah. It's, it does no, we're, have. We're literally telling him everything he knows about the movie at the moment. <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> okay. Looks good though. Yeah. We, we we really are it's really missing good. an opportunity to lie to him. Oh. <laughs> One of these uh, days. <laughs> yeah. Next is uh, George C. Wolf for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is uh, the next adaptation of an August Wilson play. And Netflix is apparently somewhat excited about this one. Yep. Got Viola yeah. Davis, Chadwick Boseman, Coleman Domingo, Glenn Turman. Yeah, I, heard, I heard Chadwick Boseman might be the something to watch out for there. That he's better there than in the I five months. He him. was uh he was in my year in advance, so I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready for it. Uh let's see. Next is uh I said Chloe Zhao again for the Eternals already. Taylor Sheridan, those who wish me dead. Ooh, so excited for that. Yeah, I think I have it too high, though, I'll be honest, because it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little too thrillery, and it's like... Yeah, probably. But if she's... If, let's say Jolie is really good in it, maybe that boosts it. Yeah. And you're looking for something a little different. So, I mean, it would be hard to predict it's it Taylor much. Sheridan, though. It's hard for me to get yeah. excited. Yeah, that's fair, though the Academy seems to like him. Yep. 
Uh, Thomas Gale for Hamilton because they're going to try. Zazel Jacobs for French Exit. Aaron Schneider, Greyhound. Julie Tamer, The Glorias. Oh my gosh, that would make me so happy. I love that movie. Wasn't that also a somewhat divisive uh, response? Oh, very. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it took it took a couple months after Sundance to even get uh, an official sale, but um, it's very much a Julie Taymor movie. So if you like her stuff, I think, yeah, I think people who are fans of Julie Taymor will like it. Not the Academy. I think people who aren't will be somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Mark, do you like across the universe? I love across the universe. Oh, do you? Yeah. But I didn't like the Tempest. Oh, oh I don't like nobody the Tempest did. either. Yeah. It's okay. Just, it's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Dance Gallon for Onward. Will Sharp, Lewis Wayne. Kate Shortland, Black Widow, because sure. Uh, Emerald Fennel for Promising Young Fennel. Fennel. Promising Young Woman. God, I just want to see that movie. Oh my gosh, I love that movie. Uh, yeah, I, I was about to say earlier, earlier when, when you said no one will be upset if Kate Winslet just wins actress, I was like, maybe Carrie Mulligan will be upset. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit her. It's so good. Um, Eliza Hitman, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always. Uh, still my favorite movie of the year. Uh, Kitty Green for The Assistant. Very cold, but. Oh. It's, it's, yeah, not going to be up the, not for the Academy. Yeah. Listen, I, I, think, nope. I, think, I, I think I think Ju- I think Julia Julia Garner is going to yeah. be a top twenty ish person for the yeah, year. Yeah, I don't think she'll sniff the Oscars, but that'll she's, that'll probably so be a Spirit good. Award. Oh yeah, she, yeah, film, right? yeah, 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 yeah. It'll do great mm-hmm. there. Yeah, might win Gotham. Mark, did you see it with me? Or no, I, saw, I didn't get I saw to without see you. It. I, saw you, without I you, think right? you saw that, and I was um, seeing um, the Vardna, Agnes Varda film. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. which thanks. Yeah, uh, a lot of people love Agnes Varda. I'm Mark, least, and, uh, you get some, you get some appreciation. Uh, Lee Daniels, United States versus Billy Holiday. If it comes out this year. Uh, George Clooney also has a movie, The Midnight Eye, with Netflix, if it comes out this year, because there's talk about that. Uh, Max Barbacow for Palm Springs, but, you know, no. Oh, good. Oh, that would be oh, just too, 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 too much of a perfect, Joy. Too much of a perfect there's, role. There's, a, there's <laughs> yeah. a, like, 1% chance it could do original screenplay, and that's probably yeah. it. Uh, listen, mm-hmm. I want Kristen Malati at the Golden Globes, lead actress, musical, or comedy. She should win it. Yep. Yeah. That could definitely happen. Yeah, uh, Rod Lurie for the Outpost. It's done really well in the VOD. A really good movie. In the really good the movie. VOD space. Yeah, they have no uh, budget though. He's he's been pretty yeah. vocal about. But, they don't have budget to compete. But you know, like, you know, like honestly, like though. yeah, good. I was saying, I've actually I've talked to him about, about this. He uh, he wrote the song that. Um, Rita Wilson sings their, their like original song at the end. That might be their play to get nominated yeah. and be on the radar of the Academy. Is if you can get in that that group goes for stuff, big budget, small budget, no budget. So you get there, you're on the radar for maybe picture in a different way. It's not going to happen, but like they could get in the song because who the hell knows? Uh, Jonathan Butrell for everybody's talking about Jamie. It's a musical at uh, 20th Century Studios. Uh, Based off a musical that's supposed to be coming out. Uh, Lee Wanell for The Invisible Man, because sure. Uh, Lisa Barrows, <laughs> Disa, and Glenn Lyburn for Ordinary Love. You know Ordinary Love is one of the top 25, I believe, uh, best-rated films of the year? I am shocked. Actually, let me see. Nope, 36. It's number 36. Best-rated so, film. is 93% I mean, on Rotten Tomatoes. It's totally fine. Um... Armando Iannucci, Personal History of David Copperfield. Clea Duvall for Happiest Season. I'm really excited to see that. I like her. Uh, Good can't cast. Wait for, can't wait for the case dues to come out to be like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Chris Stewart. I mean, hey, we, <laughs> Are, we just you know, know what? You know what's shocking? Actually, you know what's shocking? That the case dues, despite her getting closer to Oscar love, then probably, like most people I'm about to name, her fandom is not annoying in the slightest. Like, no, they're so the like Sam Hugans, the the Chalamets. No, the, she's, her fans like, are delightful. They're all like, I love her. Isn't it great when she's good? And you're like, oh, I didn't like this movie. Oh, that's great. I like them. Like, they're so like lovely. They, they, yeah, they seem very friendly and just like you know, they're like, you know, yeah, they're just, they like, are and. 
the Dakota Johnson fans too. Yeah. Are they? Like those groups are just so sweet and delightful. Mm. They just want you. I don't to, mind them. They just want you to like what they like, and if you don't, okay, maybe we'll get you next time. As opposed, yeah, to, right. they, 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 yeah. Like they, like. mm-hmm. they seem okay with the world being different. It's a little weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they uh, <laughs> they do they do not treat you like you wrote a like you drew a cartoon of Muhammad. You exactly. know, they, they have yeah. a much much more accommodating view yeah. of the world. Uh, ben Wheatley for Rebecca. We just got images. The drop speak. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Yeah, it does look great. It, it looks great. <laughs> We have to see what it's going to look like, though. Yeah. I, I will say, by the way, though, I think Army Hammer casting is pretty spot on, pretty great. So it, like, looks- it was a good call. Mm-hmm. I just really hope that they can uh, convince people this isn't a remake of the Hitchcock film. This is just another adaptation of the novel. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think I think you're overestimating for people. Yeah. people. I, I think they're not. I think they're not even going to be aware it is a Hitchcock film. Sure. Uh, but I wonder how many people have even seen Rebecca, honestly. Wait, uh, the Hitchcock uh, 1941. I mean, Academy voted. Nowadays, people don't yeah. watch old well, movies, Clayton. Know, I think it's going to have an easier time <laughs> on a theatrical streaming run because no one's going to compare. Because I think normal people have not seen Rebecca. Academy yeah. members totally. Like, though, I think that group, is, it came out yeah. on Criterion like, last year. Like, it, it's, it, I know, I know, I it's so it. beautiful. Um, but yeah. Uh, Autumn DeWild for Emma, period. <laughs> By the way, Mark, did you just become? Oh, sorry, did I yeah, say that, that out loud? A lot. I, I agree, Mark. You got a taste of being popular on Twitter. And now you're going to do these polls all the time. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's, is, 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 he's tweeting right now. Yeah. Uh, oh, good thing he's engaged. No wonder he can't hear you exactly. when you talk. <laughs> yep. Shut up. Carrie Jojo Jojo Fukunaga for No Time Ooh. to Die. Joji. Forgot he's doing the Bond movie. Yeah. 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 Well, did. that's the only uh, reason I'm interested in the Bond movie. I don't movie. care about the Bond movie at all. Looking forward to it. Uh, I wouldn't uh, until his name was attached, and then I was like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. slightly <laughs> interested now. Kelly Reichert, first cow. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. I just see that one. <laughs> <laughs> that would make Mark so happy. <laughs> I'd almost uh, like it to happen just for Mark's reaction. I mean, I didn't hate the movie. I didn't hate it either. It's, it's it? totally fine. I think I Kelly, it. Kelly, Kelly Reichert is is an acquired taste. Yeah. Like, like well, I lo- I love certain women. Some people just do. Yeah. That. I like I'm, Wendy and Lucy. I know people can't deal with it sometimes. I like I, I, I love. Yeah, Wendy I like and Wendy and Lucy, and Lucy later in life. I, I've grown a lot to the Michelle Williams love of that movie. She's, yeah. What's, what's the Western movie that she did that I I liked? Uh, Meek's Cut Off. Yeah, I liked Meek's Cut Off. See, I don't like Meek's Cut Off. Like I, did. I appreciate Mig's cut off. I don't enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, here's a throwback for us uh, '80s kids. Adrian yeah. Lynn. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. I. I. This <laughs> is. This is the like pure entertainment value movie. I think I most want to see the rest of the year besides Zola. Uh, it's the movie that brought Ben Affleck and Anna Armas together. Gross. Market. Uh, oh, that. I'll never forget right. over that. I hate that movie already. <laughs> I know, right? Mark, it's, automatically Mark, Mark, it's, ass. it's an Adrian Lynn erotic thriller. You're not going to hate it. I'm in. No, <laughs> if, if Ben Affleck's all over her, it's going to gross me out more. Nah, you I'm know good. they're going to be. I'm good. Yeah. Um, based on a novel by Patricia he- uh, Highsmith, it's Highsmith. written by Zach Helm, who wrote uh, Stranger Than Fiction. He co adapted it. And then also by Sam Levinson, who wrote. Uh, Euphoria. Euphoria more. Oh my god, I love Euphoria. So, so the creator of Euphoria That's awesome. r- adapted a novel into an erotic thriller that Adrian Lynn is making. <laughs> okay, I'm there. There yeah. you go. I got and, you. and it's got and it's got my girl. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh the Euphoria writer, Sam Levinson, he also wrote um uh the wizard, happy the, 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 the wizard of Lies. He directed oh. and wrote okay. Another Happy Day yeah. and um Assassination Nation. I hate The Wizard of Lies so much. Yeah, I didn't like it either. It's, it's, it's so I, they all, all Every HBO movie like that runs the same to me. I'm like, this is fair. Uh, for all my indie kids out there, and I'm going to throw a shout out to Robert Hamer. He's going to love that I'm going to say this. Shannon Murphy, baby teeth. Zero chance. I know. but I mean, it's a great like debut. I'm excited to see what she makes next. Not for the Academy. Yeah. yeah. Also... I think that'll good. 
you have a good chance of getting a spirit nomination best, best for best yeah. first feature. Yep. There that her name is on that like second spot in best first feature. Yeah. 40 yep. 48th best reviewed film this year. Baby Tate. It's a good movie. It's just yeah. not their thing. Uh Michael Showalter for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. If it I don't comes think here. Yeah, I don't think director, but I think there's a play an actor and actress for that. Uh yeah, I think I don't know if Andrew Garfield was the right call. Yeah, I think he is. I think I think you you got to remember like phony smile, like putting on a show. Like I think he can do a good job. Yeah, that. it's gonna be it's gonna be different for him. It's a Jessica Chastain show, I think. Oh yeah, she's gonna yeah. eat it up. Uh, I'd be interested to see what Michael Showalter does, especially after The Lovebirds. Well, I mean, if you look at his, his movies he directs, he directs across like comedy and drama pretty seamless. Um, I mean, so this, yeah, I mean. Uh, he, he, um, Would we the, say seamless? Not, yeah, I don't say seamless. I mean, they're not all amazing, but like the big, the big sick is a great. That's mix. the old, that's the only one that's not good a Sally movie. Field movie he made. Hello, my is, I don't like good. Hello, my she's good in it, but it's not a good movie. It's a solid movie. It's not great. The big sick is his best movie by far. Mm. Okay. Well, the, the, he literally only has like three. He has the Baxter, Hello, my name is Doris, the big sick, and that's it. It's the only movies he's done in Love Birds. More than that. So he's he look of movies directed. Yeah. That's all. Feet, that's I'm looking at his thing right I'm now. I'm almost positive. He's directed four movies. Oh, he didn't do... Uh, hang on. He, he, he has two so. TV. He has a bunch of TV stuff. He has a TV movie. Well, so, let me see, hang on. Lovebirds, one. Big Sick, two. Doris, three. Baxter, and four. Baxter. Oh, you're right. He wrote he wrote stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah, he wrote his, a bunch of stuff. He wrote a bunch of good stuff that's yeah. in between also. My mistake. Yeah. He also did the pilot of In the Dark, and In the Dark is garbage. I don't know what In the Dark is. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, he wrote They Came Together. Um, Another Sundance movie, Heidi Ewing, I Carry You With Me. Mm. Oh, she does documentaries. So this is a this is a narrative, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be, like, really, really good. I'm going to ask yeah. Aaron. She I heard great she, things. Yeah, she missed it because, you know, she can only be so many places at once. Yeah. No. It's about a gay couple from Mexico, a Mexico uh, immigrate to New York, sacrificing everything they yeah. they have to be together. Yeah. The um. Yeah, I yeah. heard good things. Yeah. Do we wait? Go back for a second to Happiest Season. Do we have a, a date on that yet? No. Oh, yeah. I don't believe I really, so. I really want that one to be good and come out. Nope. Um, it, I don't have it listed, but I just, I, 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 this just made me think of this, and I just have to make sure I say it before I forget. Um, did you know that? Um, it's not for this year; it's for next year. Channing Tatum is co-directing a movie. Yeah. Called Dog. Yeah. In which he's starring is an army ranger and his dog embark on a road trip along the Pacific Coast Highway to attend a friend's funeral. Yeah, I knew about this. Oh, that sounds like a happy movie. Yeah. <laughs> May 7th, 2021. I mean, I, I'm I'm going to be incredibly upset watching it. But yeah, yeah he, um, he and his partner. It doesn't sound like a May movie. Well, he's it's co-directing a, it's a, it's it. A, it says it's a comedy. I hope so. What? It says it's a comedy. So I think it's going to be like road buddy trip. Dumb stuff, probably. I don't know. I mean, as long as their dog doesn't die. I mean, then it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a movie. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a, like it. If it's yeah. a comedy, the dog probably yeah. doesn't die. Well, I mean, Turner and Hooch, hello. The, the dog is probably voiced by Seth MacFarlane, though. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, dear Jesus. You're right. Oh, God, it's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, I have to yeah. say, I'm not a big fan of Channing Tatum, but I do appreciate when he does comedy. I think oh, he's really yes. funny. Yeah, listen, I don't like him in drama. So if this is a comedy, I'm oh, more interested than if it's a drama. Great. Oh my God, Foxcatcher! Jesus, he's so yeah, good. he was good in Foxcatcher. I hate Foxcatcher. Remember? Oh, he's so good. He was good in it. Well, no, I, he was okay. I, I, in it. He I, mumbles I, too I, much. That's I've, the problem. I've always said I've said that he was best in show in Foxcatcher. He went from being a terrible actor to a solid actor. He's not great. I think, he, I think he, I think, yeah, I think he could be when better. When he does I think, drama, he mumbles his way through the movie. That's the problem oh, I have. Or, with or, him. or, or romantic drama. Oh, fucking, romantic drama is terrible. In that, was, but, it, was that, uh, what was the uh, movie with, with Amanda Seyfried? No. 
Oh, uh, the vow. Yeah. Rachel McAdams. Yeah. The vow. Yeah. yeah. I need my wife to fall back oh, in Jesus. love with me. Jesus. My God, it was yeah. one of the worst line to ever. No. I've ever uh, heard. No. But Channing Tatum is also good in uh, a guide to recognizing your saints with Shia LaBeouf. He's, he's really good at it. too. I was. I, I like him in the Jump Street oh, he's great movies. In Jump Street, yeah. He I was definitely <laughs> so good in that. The improvement uh, he's shown over the years is. Is one of the biggest gaps I've ever seen of like an actor I hated oh, and yeah. actor I, I have no um, problem with. Movie. I really, I yeah. really kind of hope we still get that Twenty One Jump Street MIB crossover movie. <laughs> I would love it. Mm-hmm. I want it so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I want it so great. bad. I want it so bad. Um, the reason as long why as it's chance- not done by the people that did Men in Black International, oh, then yeah. I think it has a chance. True. No, it was. Um, it was going to be the. I think. Um, Jonah Hill might have done the the script, but it was too expensive. Oh. Oh. But he How- did the story for the first one. However, it should be said, it's going to be sad to see any MIB movie now that Rip Torn is not here anymore. So that's not. I know. Well, I mean, they already moved on to Emma Thompson. So yeah. Um, the reason I thought of Channing, she the reason the I thought of Channing was because of my next name here, Channing Godfrey Peoples from Miss Juneteenth. I think they're going to long way to go. Yeah, I think it's a long way to go. Uh, David Lowry for the Green Knight. Because never comes out, yeah, but no. Because Mark loves either. eating pie. Loves I mean, eating pie. I <laughs> really do. Love I, pie. Not a five minutes. <laughs> I felt such vindication when after Mark hated it, when Clayton finally watched it and he took that pause before he's like, I think I really liked it. I was like, yes, I win. <laughs> Oh, that movie's ah, great! Ah, three to one. Yeah. Jessica oh, and Jessica sure loves it. Only one. Jessica loves it so much. It's oh, a lot of movies. And I love that scene because I feel that scene. I, yeah, oh, scene is amazing. Yeah, I'm with yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Green Knight looks really good though. Wait, it's a good. Yeah, Green, yeah, Green Knight looks looks fun. Uh, Mark, here's your here's something to get you excited. I know okay. you've been struggling maybe for the last few, right? <laughs> uh. Mrs. Jordan Horowitz, Julia Hart, doing I'm Your Woman. Jordan Horowitz was the producer on La La Land. Yeah. And his wife is directing, and he co-wrote it with, with her. Uh, it's with Rachel Brosnahan. A woman must go on the run with her child due to her husband's crimes. Their lives become... I'm sorry, what part of that sounds like something Mark <laughs> Because it's, yeah. well, it's tied to La La Land. They just <laughs> tied it there. He hasn't seen Davy and Chazelle's first movie, so what do you, yeah. what do you think he's going to watch this? Listen, right. if, it's, if it's side, anything has to do with La La Land, I figured he'd want to watch it. It, it connects back. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Their lives become intertwined with a man and a woman, forming an unlikely partnership that teaches them more than just how to survive. It's with uh, Rachel Brosnahan and Frankie Fra- Fajon. I do like Rachel Brosnahan. Mark, yep. do you have Amazon Prime? I do. Then you can watch his first movie literally after we finish the podcast. I probably will. Four. There you go. Uh, Glenn Keane, Over the Moon. It's animated, though. Gavin O'Connor, The Way Back. Nope. Scott Cooper, Antlers, I wish. The Way Back is so good. I thought Antlers got pushed back to after February no, next year. Before, at 6, February 21st, I think. Oh, I okay. I thought it was pushed to March. Yeah, let me double check. I, I want to say um, Another, another, another yeah, Jesse Clemens. Aaron was right. April seventeenth. Nope. nope. April. No, I have February nineteenth, twenty twenty one. I think it changed. Uh, mm. IMDb. Yeah, says, yeah. It's scheduled for February nineteenth. Yeah. It was previously scheduled to be April seventeenth, but was. Okay. Good. Yeah. It was April seventeenth. Did, not, did not get nominated this year instead of next year. That's fine. Listen, it could still listen. I, Antlers looks. It's a, it's a Wendigo horror movie. That's not going to be what the Academy goes for. Listen, Graham Greene is in it, okay? Yeah. It, even if it doesn't do, like, picture director, it looks like the kind of movie that could do, like, and, production and, design. And score. more Jesse Plemons. I know. Hey. Or Jesse Plemons. He's going to be at John C. Riley this year. <laughs> Every time I see Jesse Plemons, I always think like, "Oh, it's Todd." Every time. <laughs> Ugly Matt Damon. Every time. Every time I always think of Jesse... Friday Night Lights. <laughs> oh, really? I always think of Game Night now. Well, it was funny because I met him at an event. I was with a couple of other people, and we were talking. We were talking to him, and we were asking him like, "What do people normally like recognize you for?" And he said all those 
things. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's either Breaking Bad or Friday Night Lights or Game Night. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the thing about Friday Night Lights about him is he was like the last one you would have expected to become like big star. Like the, the yeah. whole cast was like beautiful. And young. So funny how that happens. Yeah. And he was like the dorky one and he's like the best of all of them. Oh. Hello, Michael B. Jordan. Oh, that's a good point. But he's, he's, he's season two. Yeah. <laughs> he's season two. I'm yeah, original, yeah. original cast. Wait, I didn't even know Michael B. I never watched the show. I didn't know Michael B. Jordan yeah. was in it. Yeah. Yeah, he was really well, now good. Now I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Oh, it's a good, it is a good show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Judge Blum is also in The Master. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, he's in Bridge of Spies. I don't remember him at all, but I also don't remember Bridge of Spies. Yeah. yeah he's uh, he's Gary he... Powers, isn't he? Isn't he? The pilots. I swear to God, um, I do not remember Bridge of Spies like in the slide. Like I, like I know I, I I've seen it. He's, and I remember saying I liked it, but I can't. I can only remember kind of Mark Rylance in underwear. That's like mind. I remember I him saying. I remember him repeatedly saying, "Could it hurt?" Yeah. Um, no, also, he uh, he's one of the guys who gets shot down on the plane. I'm almost. No, and, he, and he's in positive. Vice too. Oh, he, I, yeah. I don't remember him in Vice, but I yeah. believe you. Uh, he was in Vice. I'm trying to remember who he was. This is going to help you all. I remember uh, seeing him, and I was just like, oh, it's Jesse Plemons. He was Joe Murphy in Bridge of Spies. Don't you know that? Mm, Yeah. (laughs) He was in Hostiles. I remember that. He was also in Other People with Molly Shannon. He was in The Irishman. And Black Mass. He's in yeah, everything. He's in a lot of stuff. Oh, look at I, st- I still think one of the weirdest facts about him is that he has a baby with Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> like, I just, I just never <laughs> looked at him together. Good for him. They're so I cute know. together. And, and those, cause, it's because he's young, too. Like, I just never, like, pictured them together. He was great on Fargo, too. Oh, yeah, he's great in Fargo. He was yeah. so good on Fargo. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you guys, did, Mark, did you see the El Camino? Yeah. Yeah. Movie. Oh my gosh. It was, it was like, oh yeah, I hate Todd. <laughs> oh yeah, now I know why I hate right. Todd so much. <laughs> oh, Todd. Uh, so just real quick, I re- I'm reading this line about Jesse Plemons real quick. It says, Plemons has long been noted for his resemblance to actors Matt Damon and Philip Seymour <laughs> Hoffman. Neither of those are true. <laughs> oh yeah, he was called the ugly mm-hmm. Matt Damon during the. Was re- he? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. One of his yeah. first film roles at age 12 was playing the younger version of Damon's character in the film All the Pretty Horses. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that movie at all. He also mm-hmm. appeared as Hoffman's son in The Master. When Plemons appeared on Breaking Bad, fans nicknamed him Meth Damon yeah, due to meth- the show <laughs> set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah, I've heard that one. That's funny. It's funny. All right. Uh, here, I like Jesse Plemons. Wrapping this up, uh, here co- uh, Hero Kazu Koreda for The Truth. No. Ken Loach for Sorry We Missed You. Definitely not. Uh, Ed- Eduardo Ponti for The Life of he- Life Ahead. That's uh, Sophia Loren's movie. Mm. Uh, uh, Giuseppe Cabatondi for The Burnt Orange Heresy. Nope. No, movie's G- terrible. Gina Prince Bythewood for The Old Guard. Fun movie, not gonna happen. Uh, Amy Simmons for She Dies Tomorrow. Yeah, I like that movie, but the Academy would sooner vote for Mark just for being Mark. I mean, I am a middle aged white man. <laughs> That's true. You, you, you probably will get like 15 yeah, places. I've got a chance. Yeah. Hmm. Great. Um, Edson Oda for Nine Days. Don't know it. That's the um, Winston Duke movie. And Zazie Beats, Zazie Beats, Zazie Zazie. Beats, that was at um, fucking Sundance. Sorry, <laughs> drew a blank. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. A reclusive yeah, no, man conducts gonna... a series of interviews <laughs> with human souls for a chance to be born. Yeah, that sounds like an Academy movie. I've heard very, I heard very mixed things about it at Sundance. And even if people like it, it doesn't sound like the kind of thing that's going to make waves with the Academy. But it sounds intriguing. I still want to see uh, it. Jessica Swall for Summerland. No. Also from earlier this year. Also believe it is. It was the, it's, well reviewed. It's not, yeah, top 100. Uh, well, it came out last week, so it's still, you know. So make, it, make its way through. Yeah. Uh, Judd Apatow. For King of Staten Island, it'll be on Joey's ballot. Uh, 
in my top ten. Michael Angelo Cavino for the climb. I also don't know how that's working this year with the climb. The climb was at Telluride last year. I know it came out this year, but I also don't know if they did a qualifying run. So I'm not even sure that's even eligible or not. Uh, It played at Sundance. Yeah, I think it was going places. So I I think it might be eligible this year. Sean Durkin for the And it was supposed to play at South Bay. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Completely blanked on South by that. Like that was even like almost yeah. a thing this year. Uh, Veronica Franz and Severin Fiala for the Lodge. No, I love the Lodge. The Lodge so is much. not good. Lodge is pretty well received. Seventy. There are things about it that I admired, but as a movie, I think I've decided that I really didn't like it. Yeah, I did not, I did not care for it. Uh, Josephine Decker. For I Shirley. really like their other okay. movie. Yeah, oh, good night, Shirley is so good. I love Shirley. Shirley's solid. Wait, say what you were saying about uh, the other movie for the Lodge people. What? She, she likes um, yeah. Good Night Mommy a lot better. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Austri- Austrian film. That's That one's yeah. really good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Murphy for The Prom. So, <laughs> thing on The Prom is they have one more scene to shoot, but they've already started editing and stuff. So that's going to be maybe, maybe not. By the way, did you guys see the preview for Ratchet? No. You didn't? Mark, where are I you? I saw the poster. What? Oh, yeah, the trailer dropped. It was, oh, okay. I heard, I, I heard a clip from the trailer on a podcast. It looks, it looks, it looks very good. I, it, it, it may be I a didn't tad. didn't need to watch the trailer. It might be a tad over the top, but it looks like Sarah Paulson. Listen, like she is one of the perfect humans in the world. So there's that. Um, Neil Berger for Voyagers. Not sure if you guys. I, Voyagers was not on my radar. Yeah. Um, Neil Berger was the one who directed Diver- Divergent, but he also directed The Illusionist. The Illusionist. Yeah. So you get to feel good either way. Um, yeah. Voyagers is supposed to come out November 25th, and it's set in the near future. The film chronicles the Odyssey of 30 young men and women who are sent deep into space on a multi-generational mission in search of a new home. With Colin yes. Farrell and Ty Sheridan. Oh, I like Ty Sheridan. And, and, Lily Rose Depp is in it, too, so Joey's going to love it. Yep. <laughs> and, Finn, <laughs> and Finn Whitehead, because he's from Dunkirk. Yeah. Yep. This sounds so much like... Um, it's PG-13 already. It sounds like a really bad Divergent already. Oh, man. Uh, Colin Farrell's going to play some like old... Much. like head in charge dude and that'll be it you he's probably gonna yeah. die yeah. or be the villain <laughs> he'll, he'll die and leave the kids to figure out how to get home or whatever uh quinton depot for deer skin justin kurzel for the true history of the kelly gang no Koki, what no one both they're both good movies but no neither neither are even close to what they like this is why we're ranking 100 I know. H- hence the point of the rankings. What, num- what numbers were they? Like what 79 they? and 80? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Uh, Koki Gitterock for How to Build a Girl. Cute movie. Alan Yang for Tiger Tail. Haven't seen it. I actually haven't watched Tiger Tail. I should watch that. It's all on Netflix, too. Uh, Rebecca Hall for Passing, because that's supposed Ooh. to eventually fucking hit somewhere. Yeah. Curious is it. Uh, actually, now, now I definitely don't think it's going to be this year, though, no, because I think it. the plan was to because they were going to I think they were going to go to it was supposed to go to Cannes, I think, mm. or it was going to go to Toronto and try to get picked up out of there. Oh, poor Rebecca Hall. Uh, Stephen Karam for the humans, Nia DaCosta for Candyman, because hell yeah, that trailer look made me look. So oh my happy. gosh! I'm I know, but so I know, I, I, but I know, I know, but it's still like baller. Uh, Abner Pastoli for a good woman is hard to find. Koganada for after Yang. Uh, hmm. Arjan Satrapi for radioactive. Craig Brewer for coming to America, the number two. America. When is that coming out? Christmas, I think, is slated for still. How is it? Yeah, I don't think they've changed it. It's, the only, it's like one of the only three things that Paramount still has slated. Uh, Darius Martyr for Sound of Metal. Kirsten Johnson for Dick Johnson is Dead. John Lee Hancock has a movie. Get ready for that, guys. The Little yeah. Things. You know how much you love John Lee Hancock. Oh, yeah. He's the best. I actually... Well, 
think his movies are fine. Fine, they're fine. He's he's a he's a poor man's Ron Howard to me. That's a good kind of good description. Yeah. Uh, the rookie, the Alamo, the Blind Side, Saving Mr. Banks, the founder, the Highwayman. I liked the. He's okay. I think I like the founder best of his movies. Highwayman uh, is the Costner and Harrelson one, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I liked that yeah. a lot. Because it's Kevin Costner. That's like a Joe, Tate, like a Joey Deschanel movie. Right. Come on. <laughs> Costner for me. Yeah. Listen, Mark, we're all tied to something like pretty like apparent. So if Kevin Costner's it, like I'm surprised you didn't all screen tied. I'm surprised Costner. you didn't put that Kevin Costner movie that I mentioned as the front runner and director already that he's gonna do uh with Diane Lane. Oh well. It should be. It's called Let Him Go from Thomas Buschetta. Who did the Family Stone? Am I right? Yeah, Family Stone. I like the Family Stone. I love the Family Stone. Yeah, such a good. Yeah, movie. it's gonna be Kevin Costner, Diane Lane, and Leslie Manville, a retired sheriff and his wife, grieving over the death of their son, set out to find their only grandson. Oh my God, this is Kevin Costner, all over it. Yeah, yeah. nothing better. Uh. Oh shoot! I just saw the time. I have a meeting in like oh, five minutes. Wrap it up then with uh last. Five or Kenneth Branagh, no. Death on the Nile, Stella, Me- Stella Meggie for the photograph, D.W. Young for the bookkeeper, Chris Sanders for the Call of the Wild, because yes, hmm. and Mark Rianda for Connected. I don't know. All of them. All of, all of them are going to happen. Good times. Uh, Aaron, totally. where can they follow you? I am on Twitter and Instagram at Karen M. Peterson. You don't mean that. I do mean it. Uh, where are you, Mark? I am in Akron, Ohio. Um, you can follow me at Mark Likes Movies. Follow him on Kevin Costner Loves Movies. <laughs> I bet you love The Postman, don't you? I actually didn't hate it. Of course you don't. Yeah, oh, I didn't. Oh. I... <laughs> Mark, do you also like Open Range? Oh, I, God, yes. I loved Open Range. God, dear Jesus. That shootout yeah, at the end yeah, was amazing. Hey, Joey, where can I follow you? Zero. Joey Magazine, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, all that stuff. There was zero percent. Chance he didn't love that movie. Listen, it's got the ball in it too, and that shootout at the end, man. That's good stuff. Should have been <laughs> should have been a sound contender. Yeah, that's what it should have been. A sound I mean, the, the sound from the shooting, you gotta watch it, that movie. I got a motion picture sound editor's uh precursor, so there you go. Oh, not surprised. It was nominated for a Western Heritage Award. There you go. Good I, movie. Bad right, it follow, was. Follow me at War Circuit, downloads of Stitcher Radio, iTunes, Spotify. Go to WordSucker.com for your entertainment news and just, you know, stay alive mm. as, long as, as long as you can. Uh, for Word Circuit and Circuit Breaker, I'm Clayton with everyone. We'll see you at the movies. Take care. Bye. Circuit Breaker is brought to you by AwardCircuit.com. Just plug in.